Class sizes of 25, 33, how about 4,500? We're talking to the amazing Steve Sherman next. That's right. We got Steve Sherman today all the way from South Africa. He is the, uh, the webmaster and the creator of livingmaths.com. Uh, that's how you say math in uh, <laughs> most of the, the rest of the world. You. <laughs> in the civilized part of the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not, <laughs> Where, we call whenever it. Whenever you find a metric system, you say maths. <laughs> <laughs> that's wow. right. This is where it makes sense. <laughs> so, Steve, welcome to the show today. Uh, we know you do a lot of global connecting, and uh, you are not just the teacher of a handful of students like most of us are. You teach students all over the place. Uh, so, uh, we want to talk to you about that as well as uh, your website and everything. So thanks so much for coming on the show with us today. You're absolutely welcome. So fire away. What would you like to know? <laughs> well, Steve, well Steve, give us a little you, background. Yeah, give us some background of, uh, you know, what, what have you been up to and uh, who are you? So I, I'm sure that it would be great for our listeners just to become familiar with you because you do some amazing stuff. Um, I'm one of those people that, you know, when you say do what you love and love what you do, I'm very fortunate in that I literally love what I do. I, I don't consider it work because I get to do all the things that I'm passionate about and the bonus is I actually get paid to do it, so I, I can't complain too much. Um, effectively, I'm the Chief Imagination Officer and we are a STEM-based program where we offer enrichment extension programs uh, as an extramural before, during, and after school. We also have the Loving Maths program, and that's for the kindergarten age group because we want to get them excited about problem solving at a very young age. Uh, we're very involved with science outreach. So, for example, because we work closely with NASA, if the astronauts come out to Cape Town, we take them around to the schools and we allow the kids to, well, it's what I call democratization of science. We get the kids to be able to literally go face to face with these astronauts. And these are normally people who are untouchable. You never get a chance to, to, uh, to actually speak to them one on one. And, and we like to make them more accessible to young kids because that's what's gonna make them passionate about maths and science. When they actually get to talk to people who use it in their everyday life. Now, uh, I noticed that you, you have a podcast as well and you interview, uh, as you're referring to, you interview these people. Uh, you interviewed uh, a young man that had uh, muscular dystrophy, I believe it was, or something. Correct. And so mm -hmm. how do you explain that to the audience? Like, that's really novel, you know? I mean, that you would do something like that and just get into his life and everything. What's the connection there? What's the purpose behind that? Now, that is a good question. A lot of people ask me, why would I do all these interviews? And as we speak, in about an hour's time, I have another interview with uh, Dr. Sue Black, who is a computer scientist, but she's got a, a very interesting history, and she's also involved, she wrote a book on Bletchley Park, which is about how the Brits managed to crack the German codes during the Second World War using the Enigma. So she's actually a very fascinating person as well. But now going back to Kevin Chandler, how does he fit into it? For me, it's about problem solving. If you want to do things in life, you need to be able to problem solve. And it doesn't always have to do with numbers. It's about living your life. It's about, you know, solving problems on the playground at school. It's about solving problems within your families at home. That is real mathematics to me. And hearing Kevin and, and his story on how he overcame many obstacles to achieve his goal and the types of problems that they encountered and the novel ways that they managed to solve those problems, that to me is what it's all about, sharing real life problem solving. That's beautiful. Scott? No, and Steve, I, I was lucky enough to have you come in and teach my class and we had fun for about an hour connecting and I think that's really what's beautiful about what you're doing. Can you tell a little bit more about how you're connecting with classrooms all over your area in South Africa and now it's just kind of like exploding and you're being connected throughout the world? Absolutely. Um, it started out a few years ago where I met this individual over the internet. Uh, I saw an article about him. He, he was teaching uh, mathematics classes to a school in a remote school in India that had no electricity. They ran on a generator, but 
he was from the village and he felt that he wanted to give back and he, and he and his friends built the school. They actually built it over Skype. I mean, if you heard the story of how they, they, they did site inspections with a laptop moving around. I mean, it's insane that they have a two-story school and it was all done <laughs> over Skype. But that's another story. So when I met this guy, I thought, you know, Chandra Khan Singh, I thought, this is such a, a wonderful thing. What would happen if I could teach more classes? And I set out uh, to achieve 100 classes over the next year. I wanted to teach around the world. And I think once the program started, I think I managed to achieve that probably in the first two or three months. And then it just got out of hand. And as you know, when you connect with people around the world, uh, they start introducing you to other like-minded people. And I was very fortunate to join the HLW, the Hello Little World Skypers group. We've got about, uh, about 200 teachers from around the world who are on 24-7, 365. And what that allows us to do is that at certain time zones, when some schools are asleep, the others are awake, and, and we get to connect and, and teach in each other's classes. Um, and then often they all say, oh, by the way, I'm involved in this Twitter chat, or I know these guys that are doing a podcast. I'd like to connect you. And the networking of, of these habitual givers. These are teachers, and I, and I don't need to tell you guys about it because you know all about it. These are people who don't do it for money. They do it for the love and the passion. And they are such habitual givers that when we get in this group, there's no shortage of resources and sharing that continues over and over again. So now if I get to connect with schools, sometimes I actually go out and I solicit work. In other words, uh, I noticed someone sent an email that in Ireland they were having National Maths Week. So I emailed the organizers and I said, I would love to run uh, a math show for a whole bunch of schools simultaneously online. And they said, well, it's never been done before. And I said, precisely, that's why I want to do it. <laughs> and we did it. And it was so successful that they are my, maybe talking about even flying me up to Ireland this year to actually be there in person. So, so just because, you know, you show your passion and your enthusiasm, people get that genuine enthusiasm. They go, we actually want you to come and, and, and actually be here in, in your physical presence to, to get that infectious enthusiasm to be spread around to as many people as possible. And I think that's key. It's about not just being enthusiastic, but finding like-minded people and then trying to connect us all with even more people like us. That's great. Hey, Steve. The so world needs, the world needs a movement. <laughs> totally, totally. So give us a little glimpse into what would it look like uh, if you came into my fifth grade classroom virtually and taught my kids a lesson? What, 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 do, you, what do you mean by that? I mean, are you gonna explain a math concept to them or, or what would you do? Well, I think the, the best way to introduce students uh, in a grade five students to concepts in mathematics would probably be to start off with a problem. And usually I like to do brain teasers because that eases the, the, the comfort, the, the connection that we have. And, and I'll give you one because I think that's the best way for you to understand. Um, if you give a brain tease and the kids start engaging and they realize it doesn't matter if they get the wrong answer because... We're all just shouting out different answers and we're we engaging. They actually enjoy the process so much. But then when I get to explain, that's where I get to talk about the real mathematics and they don't even realize it. So, so one example that I do is I might say to the kids, I'd like you to take out a $100 bill. And then what I want you to do is to fold that dollar bill in half 10 times. And if you can do it, not only can you keep the $100 bill, but I'll give you another $100 in, as well. And of course, the kids are very excited and the teacher pulls out the $100 bill, which is obviously our annual salary. So it's, it's something that is quite precious <laughs> I was to say, us. Are there teachers with $100 <laughs> bills? Because I'd like to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we have bills for $100, but that's a different story. And of course, you give them the, the bill and you let them attempt to fold it. Now, after about five or 10 minutes of grappling with it, they will soon realize it cannot be done. But the other kids in the class will say, no, it can be done. You give it to me, I'll show you how it's done. And they will attempt it and realize it can't be done. So then the big question is, why can't it be done? And that's where I come into it. I like to talk about the mathematics. You see, it's not, it's not good enough for a student to say to me, it's impossible. 
They have to say it's impossible because, and there are two very good reasons. The first one is every time you fold the paper money in half, the paper gets thicker. So it goes from one sheet to two sheets, and when you fold that over, it becomes four sheets, then eight sheets, then 16, and that allows me to introduce binary numbers and to the powers of two. And of course, if you write it down and you've shared screen, they can see it um, on, on a, let's say, a PowerPoint, you can actually have the numbers popping up. And then you say to them, but when you fold it in half the first time, it's now half the size. When you fold it in half again, it's now half of a half, which is a quarter. And if you fold it again, then it becomes half of a quarter, which is an eighth. And if you could fold it in half 10 times, A, it'll be 1,024 pages thick, and B, it'll be 1,024 times smaller, which is really difficult to fold. And then we always end off by challenging the kids to go to their parents and ask them if they could borrow $100 and then get the other parent to try and do it. And if they can't, then they've got to give them $100. And you know how the story goes. The kids go home and make some money. But they learned one or two important concepts without knowing that that was my intention. And they love my math because of the money they get, right? But it's practical. There's an application. Yes. And it was fun. And Absolutely. anything that you have an emotional connection to, you will love and remember even more. Absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit more. We're, we're going to be running out of time here soon, but tell us a little bit more about what people can find if they come to your website. Um, a whole bunch of things. Uh, first of all, we send out an email once a week filled with loads of links and resources to things that we are involved with and to websites and, and, and posts that we've seen on Twitter and Facebook that we think teachers and students would benefit from. We also have a load of resources. If we're doing workshops for teachers on tech in the classroom, uh, we might run ed tech workshops. We'll then have uh, Google Docs with all the links that we use in that particular workshop so that they could obviously have access to it, but then everyone else has access to it. We run a maths Olympiad from kindergarten up to grade nine, and you can have all our past papers with work solutions from the year 2000 up until the year 2016. Wow. We also do our interviews, which you can join in. We actually invite classes to join in live, and then the kids get to ask the questions. So in the next couple of weeks, we've got some astronauts, we've got some actresses and, and, and actors from Hollywood. Uh, I can't say who. We've got one or two authors, and as soon as the dates are booked, we then obviously will advertise it on our website, and then there's a calendar where you can actually click on the dates to see who's doing uh, the interviews and when, and then we'll invite your class in so that your students can ask the questions. So many great resources. That is awesome. Scott, yeah, it, it, any it, last uh, quick ones there? No, I just think people just turn the podcast off and are going to his website. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, I mean, I'm about to leave, Tim. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and do you need any glasses for today's interview? <laughs> well, I'll send you the, the Hangout link and you guys can join. So you're going to be starting in, in one hour's time. So if you've got a class with you, you're welcome to join. Uh, I just awesome. might do that. Sounds okay. good. Cool. All right. So um, we are going to switch gears with you right now. And mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, Steve, you are not the only Steve Sherman on Earth. Did you realize that? I, I, I do. In fact, there was <laughs> the CEO of, of uh, was it CEO of Boeing? Uh, apparently, there's a Steve Sherman photographer. You know, when you're looking for a Gmail account and you think, oh, I'll just type Steve Sherman. Maybe I'll get Steve Sherman number one or two or three or 900. And you realize I'm not that unique, sadly. <laughs> you are <laughs> unique. i to terms with it. <laughs> you're extremely, you are our favorite Steve Sherman, that's for sure. Well, there but we go. I'll you, take that any day. <laughs> we're going to ask you some questions about some other Steve Shermans that are not nearly as cool or awesome as you. Uh, and you're going to be uh, playing a little game with us. We're going to ask you some trivia questions about them. So, Scott, sure. why don't you tell our audience who Steve will be competing for today? Steve, this game will be called The Real Steve Sherman. <laughs> the Real Steve Sherman. <laughs> and you're going to be competing for a third-grade teacher, Ashley Jones, if you're able to answer two out of three. Yes, 66%. Right? Did my math do? Uh, that? Okay, good. You're uh, doing well. Correct, 
<laughs> Ashley will be awarded a free download of an album of the ridiculously popular edgy rock band, Rockin' the Standards. That is awesome. <laughs> All right, here we go, Steve. So question number one. Steve Sherman, as you mentioned, you already, you already learned a little bit about this, is an accomplished photographer, and he actually hails from Northridge, California, which is not too far away from us. Mm -hmm. uh, where does he set up shop? Is it A? In his home. Is it B? In a strip mall. Or is it C? In the back room of his dad's barber shop. I'm going to go with C. Let's see. Oh, well, unfortunately, that one sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> but, but he sets up shop in a boring old strip mall. Yes. Uh, I knew it. I should have gone with my, you know, they always say, go with your gut instinct first choice and stick with it. But I don't know. I just decided to change to go with C. <laughs> well, that's okay. But I still have two more to go. <laughs> you got two more chances, and I'm sure you'll do better on these. All right. So there's another Steve Sherman. Question number two. There's another another Steve Sherman who's a famous puppeteer. Have you heard about this one? I haven't. No. <laughs> oh, he's he's probably the the most accomplished of all the other Steve Shermans. Of course, you're the most accomplished overall. But he's the most accomplished of the other Steve Shermans. Uh, for which of the following TV shows? Did Steve provide puppets? Is it A? A, a show that I loved. It's called Sigmund and the Sea Monster. Did you ever watch mm -hmm. that one when you were a kid, Steve? Uh, I, I didn't, but I, I know of it. Oh, okay. 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 Uh, they talked about Shellavision on there, you know, on the. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, or is it B? HR Puff and Stuff. Did you ever see that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. No, I didn't. No, you have you heard of it? <laughs> no. He's a, yeah. hey, hey, let's ask him about uh, American TV shows. He's in South <laughs> Africa. <too. laughs> no, it doesn't matter. You can throw these things. I like a challenge. <laughs> or is it choice C? Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse. Have you heard of that one? I have indeed. Uh, but obviously, Pee Wee Herman for a different reputation. But let's see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is a tough one. This is a tough one. But I'm going to, can you say the three choices one after the other? And I'm going to see if I can read Scott's body language. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to go to the mathematical approach. Say each choice Sigmund and the Sea Monster. <laughs> uh huh. HR Puff and Stuff. <laughs> uh huh. Wait, Harden's Harden's Plows. <laughs> I'm going to go with C. Are you kidding? How did you know that? <laughs> yes, that is true. Steve Sherman, the famous puppeteer, actually made puppets for Pee Wee's Playhouse, which wow. I actually enjoyed watching as an adult. It was quite a <laughs> uh, It's quite surreal. <laughs> yes. All right, so question number three. You have one last chance here, Steve. Uh, lastly, the most famous of the Steve Shermans is a ran renowned artist tongue-in-cheek he's not famous at all but uh what mm -hmm. medium does this steve sherman work with in his artwork is it a marble crafting is it b old car parts or is it c wood turning so steve your three <laughs> choices that you have to pick between are marble crafting old car parts or wood turning and now I'm looking at, at the, the body language, and I, I see he's trying to use reverse psychology. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. you got to watch out for this guy. Um, I'm rooting for Ashley Jones. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking B. Are you sure? Is that your final answer? Old car parts? I'm going to go with C. I'm going to change my mind and go with C. Let's see if that helps. You want to change your mind? Oh, hey! Man. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is more interesting if he would work with old car parts, but uh, he turns, and you should see his his uh, his artwork that he does. It's absolutely amazing. It doesn't even look like wood. He's so getting, uh, I'm going to have to Google myself right now. <laughs> yeah. Google yourself and find out about all those great art projects you're making. So, uh, and Scott, I thought my finger painting would, would, would get me somewhere, but obviously not. <laughs> you could have a Steve Sherman interviewing Steve Sherman on your show, too. Oh, that would be awesome. We're going to have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good job, Steve. How did you, you got to do today? 
Good job, Steve. You got two out of three correct, and that's good enough to be a winner. Thank you. So now we, we, do I get to – who do I get to, to donate the prize to? Congratulations, Steve. You won absolutely nothing. But Ashley Jones in Texas – yes, Texas. What? She just won a free download of this ridiculously popular, awesome, edgy rock band. Rocking the standards. That seems very reasonable. And I'm, I'm glad you got that because I've heard only good things about rocking the standards. Um, <laughs> Today. <laughs> Today. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Steve, uh, before we sign off, uh, we know that your website is livingmaths.com that people Correct. can go to. How else can people connect with you uh, in the future? We're on Twitter. You can get all of us on Living Maths. On Facebook, you can look under Living Maths. On Instagram, you can look under Living Maths, and you should be able to find us. We keep it nice and simple. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, and uh, just one quick reminder for our audience, Scott, tell them about Global School Play Day. Hey, uh, it's the first Wednesday in February. If you're listening uh, soon, get on the website, register. It's a free event. It's just a grassroots effort to say, hey, play is vital for a child's development, and we all need to celebrate this. This is a kickoff event just to encourage um, unstructured play. That's let the kids choose. Don't set up a bunch of things for them, Tim, right? Let the kids decide what their day looks like because that's where they learn empathy. That's where they learn compassion, creativity, so many different things from that unstructured play. It's globalschoolplayday.com. Visit it for resources to register your support or your class or school or district. Tim, right now, if you're listening to this in the year 2017, there's over 175,000 kids from over 40 nations around the world signed up to participate in Global School Play Day. That's right. That's huge. And it's device free. You know, the kids never have a chance to get bored and then have to create something because when you're on a device, uh, you're always constantly entertained. So uh, this is a device free event. We want the kids to get to the point where they're bored and they have to come up with something themselves, like what we did yeah. when we were kids, right? <laughs> battery, battery free. Battery free, right? <laughs> So uh, well. join in on the movement, and thank you again, Steve. Uh, we totally appreciate it, and we'd love to have you on again because I, I feel like I've got 100 more questions for you. Going to check out your website some more. I already have, and uh, watch some more of your podcasts and get some of your resources. So thank you for doing all that. For the order some of my artwork um, and, and <laughs> obviously <laughs> all the, uh, my photography, I'm, I'm, I'm quite well known, actually. Yeah, yeah, you are, you are. But you are really contributing to the educational community, and we all appreciate that. So, all righty. And well, hope, hopefully, if any teachers would like, I would love to climb into their classrooms virtually and, and mess with their kids' minds, and they just have to get hold of me, and I'm happy to do so. Awesome. Sounds good, and, and thanks. And trust me, it's worth it, everybody who's listening. Totally. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching, everybody. And most of all, thanks for watching. Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad. <laughs>